Hi, good morning, and welcome to Missionary Grow. My name is Ashley Travis, and on behalf of all of us here, I would like to thank each of you for being here and joining us today. If this is your first time visiting, we hope that you've enjoyed it and that you'll consider joining us again soon. Also, first-time visitors, please go online to missionarygrow.com and fill out the MGBC Connection Card to tell us a little bit about yourselves, and be sure to stop by our Welcome Center, where we have a very special gift for you to take home. Do you feel that the Lord is leading you to become a member here at Missionary Grow? Or do you feel that you're ready to take your next step in your walk with Christ and be baptized? We offer a new members class the first Sunday of each month, and we also offer baptism services the second Sunday of each month. If you would like more information about becoming a new church member or being baptized, please contact Mr. John Sewell. Our monthly Daughters of the King Women's Ministry Group will be meeting on April 10th at 5 p.m. We will have a great testimony, fellowship, and refreshments. All ladies are invited and encouraged to attend. Easter Sunday is coming up soon on April 17th. We have invitation cards in our Welcome Center that you can pick up and pass out to your friends, families, and neighbors. We are also very excited about our annual Sing for the Risen King event. This is a wonderful time of worship that will take place on Saturday, April 16th at 6 p.m. Please mark your calendars and plan to join us. Attention ladies, this year's Women of Joy Conference will be in Pigeon Forge October 7th through the 9th. We don't have the specifics just yet, However, if you would like to attend, please let Mrs. Tamara Smith know by Easter Sunday. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the king of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might. But he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory. But he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't gonna be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our king. Stand up and worship the King with us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've already done in this place and all you're about to do. We come expecting miracles in the name of Jesus. I brought my phone. I'm not texting anybody right now, but I wanted to show you. I had to read this for myself. It's in Matthew 13. Jesus had been talking uh, to the crowds. He'd been giving some parables and, and teaching. And at the very bottom of that chapter, it says, it's titled, Jesus was rejected at Nazareth. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown, where he taught there in the synagogue. Everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Y'all believe he still has power to do miracles? 
Oh, that was kind of weak. Do y'all believe he still has power to do miracles? All right. All right. And then we scroll on down. And then they, those people that heard him, they scoffed. And they said, he's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All of his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended. Oh, my. Don't, let, don't be deeply offended at Jesus. And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. And then Jesus told them, and this is in the red letters, y'all. A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Oh, my. Let's not be a part of that crowd who has unbelief. Let's believe that God still is in the miracle work in business, right? Let's, we, let's not prevent any miracles from happening by our unbelief. So, uh, earlier up in that chapter, it talked a little bit about the mustard seed. You don't have to have great big faith, gigantic mountain moving, mountain sized faith. You just got to have faith the size of a mustard seed, which is T9 and tiny. And God will increase your faith if you have faith in Him. And he will do miracles in your life. He will do them, sometimes whether you believe or not. But it's just better to believe and be on board with Jesus, right? So let's believe for our miracles this morning. I know you're believing for something. A lost prodigal, a lost son, a lost daughter, a lost family member, a healing that you need in your body. I believe that there's going to be miracles among God's people. In Jesus' name, let's believe. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. Amen. <laughs> We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Yes, we do. We know that hope is never lost. Oh, for there is still an empty grave.
ask the people that got baptized this morning if they believed. They had to believe before they come to the Lord. They had to believe before they believed. had believer's baptism, right? So when it looks impossible, it's not always impossible. Anything is possible with our God. And when he promises you something in the word, you can stand on it. So if he says it, you better believe it. Hallelujah. Come as you are is the name of this next song. And I was thinking it's one of the coolest things is when Jesus, he died on the cross, he died for us as we were. Rank, no good. I was a drunk sinner, I'll just be honest with you, you know. And I came to Jesus, he said, come, just come on as you are. You know, it ain't like you got to work your way up to it. you got to get to a certain level before you come to Jesus, you know. I, well, let me get rid of this habit or let me get rid of, of uh my sin and then I'll, I'll, I'll wash myself off then I'll come you know Jesus said just come on come on as you are I don't care I love you just the way you are just where you've been he said, I don't care I'm ready to forgive your sins to pull your feet out of a miry clay and set you on a rock to stay that's my Jesus right there Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow, but heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow, but heaven can heal. 
There's hope for the hopeless and all who have strayed. Come sit at the table and taste of the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. A oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are, there's joy for the morning. O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who are broken. Lift up your face, so oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Come as you are. a little bit of a heavy heart after that song. I feel the Lord kind of speak to my heart and says, he says to me that you need to do a heart checkup. I don't like that. I don't know why I feel the need to be so vulnerable when I'm on the stage, but he really deals with me on that. If God never did another thing for you, would you still have joy? If the answer is no, then you don't have joy. Because our circumstances cannot dictate our praise. We have to choose to praise Him sometimes through some circumstances. Sometimes we have to choose to get out of the bed. Sometimes we have to choose to be positive. We have to choose to not wallow in whatever life is throwing at us. But the best part is we have somebody that we can fall on. We have somebody that can pick up the pieces and he can make us somebody that we're not because we can't do some things on our own, right? This verse says, I count on one thing, the same God that never fails. He never fails. 
Whether we like the circumstances, whether we understand the news that we just received, it doesn't matter because our God is still reigning on the throne, right? Let's choose to worship him. Let's choose to give him everything we have. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Do you mean that, church? working all things out you're working all things out yes i will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i will bless your name yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name
Father, we worship you as King of Kings, just as we're going to preach in a minute. And you rode into the city as they raised their voices, as they laid down their garments, as they waved their palm branches. God, I pray that this has been pleasing to you, that today you were acknowledged as King of Kings. Lord, we know that you are. God, we, without our acknowledgement, we know that you are. But I pray that in this moment, somebody has had that revelation of who Jesus truly is through the Holy Spirit. And today, for the first time, they have offered praise to the one who gave his life a ransom for many. Thank you for giving your life to us, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And thank you that you call us close to yourself now and call us into uh, the Holy of Holies through your Holy Spirit to be with you and to spend time with you and to to, to come in and you to come in and, and we to be friends, friends of God, not only your children but your friends. Thank you that you call us friends and that today we have worshipped you as such. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give him some more praise, church? Amen. 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 Let's be seated. Children's church through second grade. Let's meet in the lobby. Let's get ready for the word of God. The nursery is already in session. Amen. Luke 19. James, could you get me a water, please? Thank you, bud. I always think I have one, but I guess I preached myself out of it in the first service and the second. Luke chapter 19. Praise God. We're going to... Today is Palm Sunday. Amen. You might not know what that is, but I promise you by the end of this service you will. Um, we're going to preach about uh, Luke 19. It's when Jesus visited us. I titled this sermon... When God visits you, and uh, I've been to this place that we're going to preach about today. I've stood on the Mount of Olives. I've looked over the Kidron Valley. I've walked uh, the same steps where Jesus walked into the same streets that he was drugged down on his cross. I've been able to be a part of that. And I visited the place where Christ had walked, but... That really doesn't matter unless Christ had visited me before I got there. Are you listening this morning? Like it's about your heart. It's about what God wants to do in you. I want to ask you to do something. When you leave here, take as many of these as you think you'll give out and more. Leave them at every place you know, everywhere you go. We were at Walmart this week, and I laid one on the self-checkout. And Sophie said, "You got a daddy, you left your card. I said, I left it on purpose, honey. I'm, I'm going to leave it for somebody else. She said, well, what if the next person already goes to our church? I said, well, that's a possibility, but maybe they'll leave it for the next person. She said, okay. I said, I said we're just trying to get, well, this is God's work. We're just here. Now, go to the gas station this week. Put it on the counter beside what you buy and leave it there. Go to the restaurant this week. Tip your server well and attach this to it. If you're a cheap tipper, don't give them our card. I don't want them to know you go here. <laughs> God's people aren't cheap, all right? So don't give us a bad look or a bad name in this community, all right? So if you're a good tipper, slide that in there. Go to McDonald's this week for breakfast. Pay for the people behind you and when say, give them this card when they pull up, tell them Jesus loves you. Uh, uh, we just, this is, amen, praise God, it's just simple. It's simple, just, we believe that if we get lost people under the sound of the gospel and the Holy Spirit shows up, they're going to get saved, amen? 
it's really not that hard. I was at an evangelism deal this week, and they were trying to figure out all these strategies how to get people saved. And I said, preach the gospel, let the Holy Spirit move, and get lost people in the room, and they're going to get saved. This ain't that hard. It really isn't. God is willing to save anybody who will call upon his name. Amen? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, get these in people's hands. We've probably got a thousand of them left. If everybody shows up, praise God. Amen? Y'all that have been praying for them and inviting them, you get to stand up and they get to sit down. Okay? <laughs> or it might be bring your own chair Sunday. I don't know what it'll look like. But we've got a lot more chairs in this room. We'll fill her up. We'll pull them out here. Praise God if we only had stand. What if on Sunday, this Sunday, come and we had standing room only? Wouldn't that be something? Amen. Amen. You know, we're, we're believing God for 100 baptisms this year. And so today, we were, we're over 25 baptisms for the year. And so that means we're tracking for more than 100. But what if, just what if, God gave us 100 off of one Sunday? I mean, like, why do we limit God to 100 this year? What if 500 people come Sunday that didn't know Christ and 100 of them got saved and we baptized the 101 big move of God? I mean, th th there, there's endless possibilities with God and the Holy Spirit and with people who are given to Him. So don't, don't, think, don't think small. I know we live in a small town, but we've got to think bigger than small. Small minds get small results, all right? So in the kingdom of God, we've got to think big and we've got to believe big. And so uh, everybody always says, well, isn't our church big enough? I say, there's lost people around. It can't get big enough. Amen? As long as there's lost people and lives that need to be changed, we need to be looking towards the future. When God visits you, let's read these verses. I'm going to read them out loud, but I don't need you to because I have enough trouble reading, okay? Read along with me quietly. 19, Luke 19, 28 through 44. Let's look at when God visits us. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. And as he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. And as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they found the colt, and just as Jesus had said, and sure enough, they were untying it. The owner asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on it. And as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments, and on the road ahead of him, when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. <laughs> Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, Rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw that the city ahead, he, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late. And the peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close you in from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. God, I pray just like you saved four in the service before this, you'll save more today. God, it's, it's not uncommon for people to miss their visitation. God, a whole city missed it at this moment. There was a few that noticed who he was and what he came to do. But the majority of the people missed it. God, I pray uh, that the majority of the people in this room 
do not miss it. I pray that they figure out who he is and what he came to do. And that I pray that it's not too late. And that we'll see you high and lifted up today. Draw men to yourself. And make this the day of their salvation and visitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. After Jesus finishes telling the parable of the ten servants, it says he walked on to Jerusalem. Number one, I want you to understand that Jesus went willingly. You see, Jesus wasn't forced to go on to Jerusalem. Jesus wasn't forced to go to the cross. Let's make this plain. The nails are not what held him on the cross. He was the son of God at any point. He proclaims himself that he could have called angels down. He could have changed his direction. Yet by obedience, he kept walking the direction he was going to go. He was always one step of his, ahead of his disciples. They didn't understand what was really going on. And even this moment, they're going into what we would call Holy Week. The disciples didn't understand what was going on. They didn't, they didn't grasp it. I mean, he had come to fulfill his obedience. He had come to fulfill prophecy, whether it was modern prophecy in the New Testament that he had just spoken or whether it was Old Testament prophecy. See, he had just prophesied in John chapter 2, verse number 19. He says, destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it. Well, they, looking at him, they looked past him and saw the temple at Jerusalem. They thought, well, what's he talking about? Stone off stone? Well, that would happen in later years. But he was talking about his own body. He was talking about himself. He was talking about the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They didn't understand what he was saying, but he did. He understood fully who he was. He understood fully what he came to do. He understood fully what his job was. He understood what he was about to go through. He was fully God and fully man. Remember that. He was touching people, changing people, healing people. Marking people for the kingdom. He was doing miracles. That's why they praised him. And just, for all the miracles they had seen, they began to praise him. Fully God. He was so much God that he understood what was going on. He didn't lay down his deity. He just took on humanity. And he came to the earth knowing full well what was set before him. He understood it forever. He didn't just understand it in the moment. And God didn't just come up with the plan. There used to be this terrible song on the radio. I hope they don't play it anymore. It was a southern gospel song. And it said some words that were very unscriptural. It said that after sin had came and all that happened, God searched through heaven trying to find one who would come and, and be the payment for sin. And then he found Jesus. Well, whoever wrote that song forgot to read the Bible because that's exactly how it didn't happen. Revelation chapter 13 says that the names that were written in the Lamb's book of life belong to the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Before creation, before Adam and Eve, before sin, before anything else that happened. God knew sin was coming. God knew our disobedience would happen. And God knew that Christ was the plan. There was never another plan, a different plan, a plan B, Christ was the only plan forever. Before we were ever here, Christ was already on the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Understand that he was the lamb slain before there was the need of a lamb to be slain. Knowing this, before it ever happened, exactly what he was coming into, he walked upon the earth. He fulfilled his own prophecy from John chapter 2, but he also fulfilled the prophet Zechariah's prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you he is righteous and victorious yet he is humble he is riding on a donkey riding on a donkey's coat I mean that's what it says in Revelation chapter 19 I mean excuse me Luke chapter 19 verses 29 through 35 look at these verses with me right now 
Think about what Jesus is doing. As he came to the town of Bethpage, the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples. They got the cold. This is thousands of years before Zechariah has prophesied that this will happen. Everything that Zechariah says will happen, it does happen. Jesus went willingly. Secondly, Jesus was worshipped as these people, hear me, they begin to look and see what's happening. Now, these weren't normal people. These weren't Gentiles. These were Jews. They knew the prophet Zechariah. They knew Isaiah. They knew the writing of the Old Testament. So, when they see the prophet, listen, now, they think he's just a teacher because he's a rabbi. Remember when the Pharisees rebuke him and then they say, teacher, tell your students to be quiet. He's a whole lot more than a rabbi. When they start seeing he fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy, some of them begin to wake up. Some of them begin to see things with spiritual eyes and they see the writings of the prophets and they go, look, look. He's fulfilling all that he's God. God's, God's come to earth. He's fulfilling all. Look, it's exactly like he said it would be. What a significant moment in history this was. But what was the significance of the praise? First, we look at the garments of praise. Why would they take their, why would you get so excited about a man riding a donkey that you'd take your shirt off? I don't understand that, right? I mean, I see people like that all the time around here, and I don't, I don't, that ain't my first move. And listen, as I explain this, keep your shirts on, all right? We don't need people at the altar. Look, they already talk about us enough. If they look on that camera on live stream, see all y'all taking your shirts off here, so we're all in a mess, so just keep your shirts on, all right? What was the significance? What was the significance of them taking the shirts off, laying it on the donkey, taking their shirts off and laying it in the rows? Because you only see this one other time, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13. This is when Jehu was made king of Israel. He goes into the prophet's encounter, and when he gets in there, the prophet tells Jehu, you are going to be king. Jehu is known for killing who? Do you all know who he killed? Jezebel. Do you all remember her? I said that he killed Bathsheba in the first service. That was totally wrong. Bathsheba did need a good whooping after what she did with David, but I done killed her in first service. So I apologize to Bathsheba. If you're out there listening, I apologize. I done killed her. It, it's, <laughs> it's Jezebel. Jehu's known as a man of violence because he takes back the, 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 the vineyard. He revenges Naboth's vineyard and kills Jezebel. He, he does that. But he also, hear me, when he comes back, the people who are following him say, well, what did he say? He said, well, that God's going to give us victory. He said, no, no, what did God say? He said, God said I'm king of Israel. And at that very moment, listen to me, they recognized who God said Jehu was. Before that moment, he was just a man. But in that moment, God had anointed him to be king. So they took off their garments and they laid them down because he was worthy of that moment. Now, what do you say when you do this? You say, this is the position of my heart. A shirt's a shirt. But when I will take something that means something to me that covers my body, that I bought with my money, that I've paid for, like this is a nice shirt. If I'm willing to take it off, it ain't got nothing to do with the shirt. It's got to do with the heart. It's the position of the heart. That, that, that God, that Jesus, at this moment, the people are there. Christ comes running in. He is not just a teacher riding a colt, but he is the Son of God, declared by God himself, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. They recognize that God has given them the name above every name. Listen to me. And at that moment, they don't just take their shirts off, but they show their heart. They spiritually recognize. Some of y'all can see, and some of y'all can read, and some of y'all understand what these words are saying, but you've never seen Jesus. Jesus with your spiritual heart. You listening to me? There's a lot of people in this passage we'll get to in a moment that did not recognize who he was, but these did. And when you recognize, hear me, true worshipers worship with in spirit and in truth. When the Son of God came into their midst and they understood the truth of the Word of God, it caused them from the inside out to say, Holy, 
Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They had garments of praise, but they also said palms of praise. They, in John chapter 12, not in Luke 19, but in a different passage, all four of these, Matthew 21, uh, Luke chapter number 11, uh, excuse me, Luke 19, Mark 11, uh, John chapter number 12. It's all the same account, just a, a little bit different thing that that writer puts in there that happened. John chapter 12, it talks about him taking palm branches. Now our little kids are going to come in here in a little while that went to children's church at the end of service. They're going to bring their palm branches in. They're going to come up here and they're going to say Hosanna. They're going to say blessings on the Lord. Listen, and we're not going to praise them. They're not praising you. They're praising him. We're going to praise him for them praising him. Amen. They ain't waving them palm branches at you, all right, or me. They're waving them at him because it's a, it's a sign of victory. When David would come back out of the war, David was a king of war. He was a mighty man. The reason he could not build Solomon's temple is because he had blood on his hands. Because when David come back from the battlefield, the giants had been killed. He had come back into town, and all those people in Jerusalem would line the streets. And David would come dancing before the Lord. Lord in victory and the people will be saying Hosanna now listen to me if David gets that kind of praise when he comes into the city how much more should the son of God that one day is going to come to the Mount of Olives set his feet on it's going to split right down the middle he's going to walk across the Kidron Valley through the eastern gate and hear me he's going to occupy the throne of David he's going to take the throne of David and be king of kings And Lord of Lords, how much more does he deserve our palms of praise this morning? If David was worthy, Jesus is even more worthy. In the Old Testament, they celebrated festivals, tabernacles, festival of tabernacles or the festival of booths. They still celebrate it today. They take these palm branches. So they're celebrating when God brought Israel out of Egypt. For years, Israel wandered, W-A-N-D, not W-O-N-D. They might have wondered why they were wandering, (laughs) but God took care of them. Amen? Hey, listen to me. That Their shoes didn't even wear out. <laughs> they walked around in the sand in the desert for 40 plus years. And the soles of their shoes. I got a kid and it ain't even kindergarten yet. He don't even make a pair of shoes last three weeks. Y'all know what I'm saying? God, but God, they didn't have no food, he brought food out of heaven. They didn't have no heat, he put a ball of fire in the sky to lead them at night. It was too hot and he put a, a cloud over the sun during the day. He saved them from Egypt's slavery. Their lives were saved by God and even to this day, all the Jews, listen to me, they own the festival of tabernacles or booths. They build these shacks out in front of their houses, tents. Y'all ever been in a tent? Have you ever been in a tent that's made with sticks and wrapped in a tarp? I'm talking about a tent. That's what they build. Sticks and poles and tarps and tents. They put a table in it. And they leave their fancy houses and all that. And they go live in these booths out in the street. You know why? Because they're remembering what God did for them. Now listen to me. What are they doing when they do this? It says they get leafy branches till today, still today. They get leafy branches and they go out and they wave them in the streets. Listen to me, they don't know that Jesus has come. They don't know that the Savior has come. They're still blinded by God, but one day God will open their eyes. They wave them in the streets, and they're quoting Psalm chapter 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, save us. Hosanna, the very same thing today. Listen to me. Today in Israel was the same thing that they said 2,000 years ago in Israel. It was the same thing they were saying 2,000 years before that. That Jesus was going to come And that he would be worthy of their place Blessed is the king Now listen to me If they recognized it that's great But Jesus even said this If they didn't If they didn't The rocks will even cry out So this is how much God is God Listen to me 
It's already been prophesied that this is going to happen. Just like it's happening. And if those people decided in that moment that they weren't going to do what God was worthy of seeing done. God was saying this, hear me. This moment's going to happen with you or without you. You better choose to be here. You want in, get in. I'm, I'm saying that in live time right now. We're going to praise God and serve Him until He returns and calls us to glory. And it's going to happen with you or without you. Now what do we want? We want you to be here. But if you're not, that seat will cry out in your place. If you're not this altar, God is going to get His praise whether we give it to Him or not. Always remember that. The rocks will cry out. He's so much God that a rock can recognize He's Jesus. The problem is there's another crowd here. There's the crowd that recognizes and then there's the crowd that doesn't. Number three, Jesus wept. It wasn't the only time he wept in scripture. One group says, I know who you are. I've read about you. I've heard. I've heard all my life about you. My grandfather's grandfather used to tell me the story that a tender root would spring up from the stump of Jesse. That there would be one come that would rule and reign. My grandfather told my grandmother when we used to cook that bread. Said there's one coming in the New Testament. There's one coming. It's going to set us free. The, the, the doorposts my granddad used to tell me about. When they were in Egypt. Listen, they knew the stories. They looked and with their mind's eye. Their heart was open. And they said this has got to be the soon promised precious one. There's one group that recognized him. But there's always a group that doesn't. And Jesus changes kind of the scene. Now, if I'd have been Jesus, instead of crying, I'd have said, hey, I'm going to turn my donkey around. I'm going to ride back up the top of that hill. Y'all praise me again when I come back by, all right? Man, that was good. Everybody likes a good worship service, amen? So look, we ain't going to start all this crying. I know there's all these people over there that are going to die and go to hell. Let's go back and let's ride that donkey again, all right? Not Jesus. Hear me. People's praise, if you're not careful, careful, will keep you from doing the will of God in your future. When people talk about how good you are and how great you are and how wonderful you are and all that you've done, so at some point you will start believing what they're saying about you and it will be your demise in the kingdom of God. Deflect praise to the one who deserves it. Reflect him, but deflect praise. Are you understanding? When somebody says, good job, you say praise the Lord. You point it towards him. See, he gets past this point. And remember, this is a read the Bible small. You get to go to Jerusalem with me. We're, we're going we're gonna to see it. Read the Bible small. This is from the court square to the donut shops. All this is happening in a real small spot. There used to be a hill on the other side of the road from here to there. That's what we're talking about. So... Jesus comes through Bethany, and as he tops the hill, this is the Mount of Olives. Down below him is the Kidron Valley, right here. There's a road that goes through the Kidron Valley, back up to the other side. To When they say we're going up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem sits on a hill, literally up to Jerusalem. So they go, he's, he's, he's praise, praise God, praise God. God, praise God. He's God. And he gets to the precipice and he looks across. And he sees a city. And he realizes that the majority of people that are sitting in these chairs today didn't miss their visitation. But there's a whole bunch more people outside of that moment that are going to if something doesn't change. This is great. I love it. I get recharged. 
I, I mean, this is my wheelhouse. This is my gifting. This, this is what I love to do. I love that God has allowed me to do this. Somebody asked today, Preacher, you sure Holy got such a good church? I don't want it to lose that small town feel. Small town this. And sorry, I'm, buddy, I'm fixing to bust you up on that amen. I apologize. I get what you're saying. But we'll, we can have all the small town feel we want in a big old town church, all right? Because if somebody don't get serious about God's visitation, the people are going to die and go to hell. He wasn't, listen, in just a few years, Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. Stone off stone. Until this day, right now, it still lies in ruins. There is no temple. It has been destroyed. The Jews stand at the bottom of a wall where God isn't. And they stick prayers in cracks in the wall. Because the last time they remember God being somewhere, they think, they don't know, they think it was behind this wall in the holies of holies. There is no temple in Jerusalem. On top of the temple wall is the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock is occupied by Muslims. They spit and throw rocks at the Jews trying to pray to a God who doesn't live behind that wall. They are all confused and on the way to hell if God doesn't open their eyes. And hear me. We're that close to being there right here. We are not the Bible Belt. Listen to me. And I don't care how much we want to talk about being founded on Judeo-Christian beliefs. That's great. Nobody's doing nothing with any of it. And everybody's going to hell. Because God did visit us. And God's trying to visit us. And God wants to visit us. But we're not allowing him to have his way. So look, that, those people out there need to recognize that, right? Y'all out there need to recognize God's visited you. Hold on a second. No, I think it starts right here. I think it starts right here. In this room. I want to ask you a question. When did God visit you? These people recognize it. He is who he says he is. He is who God says he is. I will publicly. Listen, this is what they did. This was a showing of faith. This was a picture of salvation. I will publicly declare in this moment that Christ is who he says he is. King of kings and Lord of lords. But when did Christ visit you? I'm not talking about all your life. I get it. I get it. But you ain't been saved all your life. When did Christ visit you in the Holy Spirit in such a way that you were convicted of your sin? And in that moment, you knew if something didn't change, you were bound for hell. At that point, in your heart, through the eyes of faith, you said to the Lord, some way, some fashion, you experienced God where you said, I recognize your visitation and I will receive you in this moment. And that's what they were doing. They were received. He is who he says he is. He would have been king on that donkey all the way into Jerusalem. But somebody was personally recognizing him in that moment. Have you? June the 8th of 2000. Bible Baptist Church. A little small town and a little small church. God visited me. And for the first time I understood. Unless I turn it over to him and let him have it all. That he would allow me to continue to walk the path I'm on all the way off into hell. That's not what he wanted or he wouldn't have come to White Bluff, Tennessee. Y'all ever been there? Well, you probably need to ask God where it's at to get back, all right? God didn't have to come there, did he? See, the word here, when God visits in the Greek, is kairos. Kairos doesn't mean your lifespan. Kairos means a moment in time. 
a season. Now, we're a little confused on what seasons are in Tennessee. We have, you know, we're in the seventh winter of the 22nd year or something, you know, like, what, you know, it's what, uh, Blackberry or something. I don't know. I just wish it'd be over, all right? But God doesn't visit you all your life. Listen to me. This is the most important part. The rest was good. This was better. Right here. God visits when God wants to and God leaves when he's ready. God calls when he wants to and stops when it's his time. God makes plans and they're his plans. And you can do it on his terms or you won't do it at all. Kairos is a moment in time, a season, a spot, a little spot, not a forever. Well, as long as people have breath in their life, this is what I've heard from you. As long as people have breath in their lungs, they can get, still get saved. When did you become God? God calls people to himself, not me, not the preacher. And God sets down in certain places at certain times. There's a general effectual calling to all men. But there's a specific salvation calling to you this morning. Have you been saved? Do you remember that moment when God visited you and you were the first crowd, not the second one? Now the beauty of it is. God usually comes back more than once. Amen. I'm not going to say he's not going to. But I'm not going to promise you he is. I'm going to ask you a question. Why don't you just get saved? If God has visited you this morning. And put in your heart. That it's time for you to recognize him as king of kings and lord of lords. Why wouldn't you just do it? See, I don't want to wait on the next time. I want to know that this is my time right now. And then I can help somebody else find their time. That way they don't miss the visitation. Every head bowed and every eye closed. This is number one. As the music begins to play, we have to focus on this moment. I've asked God to give us souls for our labor this morning. We've had four that have professed Christ and I believe we'll have more in this moment. Now, if God has visited with you this morning through the Holy Spirit, and in your heart you are moved towards the things of God, that is God working. Man has no power to move you, only God does. I cannot call you to salvation. I can only give you the scripture. God draws you and calls you. If now that is happening in your heart, Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to do what I ask everybody else to do all day long. If at this moment you want to be saved by the grace of God. He has visited your heart this morning. And you're saying I'm going to be saved preacher. Today is the day of my salvation. I want you right now to get up out of your chair and find your way to this altar. We've got altar workers to my left. That will literally lead you to Jesus. They know how to get there. They've been there themselves. They will help you experience Him. But if you need to do it on your own, as I begin to pray, salvation is believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. Do you believe that Jesus is who I preached about today? That He's going to do, and on the third day, He's going to be resurrected? Do you believe He's the Savior of the world? Do you believe what the Word of God has said about Jesus? And then will you confess Him as your Savior privately and publicly this morning? As I begin to pray, if you want to be saved, I'm asking you, listen to me, as a show of faith, privately and publicly, will you walk these aisles? There's a bunch of people right here in this room that have walked an aisle just like this, and they would tell you, this is the best thing that's ever happened to them. I've heard people testify that the moment I stood up and believed that God who's God saved my soul. He wants to do that for you this morning. As I begin to pray, I'm going to ask God to give you strength and courage to make that move right now. It is time for you to get saved, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray right now for everyone that's getting up out of their seats that you will give them faith and courage 
to make this move towards the things of God, towards the Son of God who gave His life for them. God, I pray right now that you would bless them with the ability just to speak to you, God, and give them boldness to declare this faith relationship this morning that you initiated, that they received, yet they are going to testify to this crowd. They're going to say, this is what God has done for me through their lips and a changed life. God, save the lost in this room right now. In Jesus' name, every head bowed and every eye closed. We've got people praying. You need to move towards God and not worry about anybody else in this room. It is you and God, and this whole room's empty. This room is empty. It's you and God. Secondly is this. Hey, maybe you're that group that recognized Him. You've recognized Him for a long time. Is there anybody in this room right now that just wants to come up and lay their garment of praise on the altar? Right now, I want you to come. If you want to lay your garment of praise on the altar, if you want to lay the palm branches on the altar, if you just want to praise the King of Heaven for coming down to earth to save your soul, I want you to come to the altar right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would give us the ability to praise you right now, just like those that recognized you in the Scripture. May those that recognize you now, may they bend their hearts towards heaven. In Jesus' name. People are praying all over the house. Oh, give your heart to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. We got altar workers. We got a man and a woman over here that want to pray with you. You're struggling. You're hurting. You're suffering. You need to be saved. They're right over here to my left. I want you to go to them, and I want them to help you. Listen to me. Follow them to the cross this morning. They know the way. They know the way if the Holy Spirit's leading you. Just believe and have faith. Hear me. It's not the sincerity of your faith, but it is the object of your faith. You can't believe enough to be saved. You believe in Him and be saved. Faith is a work when you're trying to exercise it. But faith is grace when you just believe. Are you listening? Just believe. He is who He says He is. He came to do what He said He would do. He did what He prophesied, and now He is on the right hand of the Father, hearing your prayers. The Holy Spirit right now, as He is working in you, you and God have a connection through that Holy Spirit. As you're being saved right now by your faith, by your belief, by your trusting in what Jesus is saying, God is saving you. He's made a connection with you as His child. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He has visited you this morning. Here, listen to me. Praise God. He ain't leaving. Praise God. Jesus came in and locked the door behind him. Just like on that ark. Noah's ark. When God, the Holy Spirit, sealed that door, the people that were in couldn't get out. When God saves you and seals that door, what's in don't get out. There was a group of people that missed their visitation. When the Holy Spirit of God sealed the door on that ark, there was a group on the outside, and those that were on the outside at that point couldn't get in. They couldn't get in. They missed their day of visitation. Don't miss it today. It is that urgent. It is that important. People still praying. People still worshiping. I believe people are still getting saved. God would be glorified. The music's going to keep playing. Man, every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to celebrate something. Hear me. Just me looking at this moment, then we're going to celebrate you. If you got saved today, if you didn't miss your visitation, if you know God did something in your heart today, I want you to raise your hand and look at me. Just raise your hand and keep it up for just a second. Just raise your hand right now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? 
Just look at me. Raise your hand and look at me. Amen. Amen. Who else? Somebody else. Who else? God, I praise you, Jesus. God, you've answered our prayers today. You've been faithful to do what you said you would. God, there's some in this room now, Jesus, that forever will be your sons. Thank you for saving these men, changing their lives. Oh, God, thank you for visiting us one more Sunday. God, I pray that we never have a church service where you don't show up. God, I praise you for the move of God that's coming. We believe the latter will be greater than the former. Jesus' name. Would you celebrate with me for those who got saved this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I saw seven hands over the course of today, and we praise God for that. Let me say that if you raised your hand in this service, we've got books for you in the foyer. Um, There's some books that just help you walk with Jesus. It teaches you all the basics. I want you to go to the welcome desk, fill out a connection card, and uh, just tell them I sent you. They're going to give you those books to help you walk with Christ, and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about your baptism. I don't know, Miss Cammie, you going to give them some more things, instructions? Uh, Yeah, you go ahead. I've talked all day. All right. All right. What an awesome service this morning. God is good. Great day to be in the house of the Lord, for sure. All right, I've got quite a few announcements here. It's a long list. All right, first thing, shirts are left over um, from when we ordered them. Shirts are at the back, and there's the front. Shirts are $5, uh, and they're out in the foyer if you would like a shirt. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) All right. Also, remember your Easter invites. I gave out some of these at Sunday school to some of the junior high kids. Take these to school. Take them to work. um, Take them in places of business. Drop them off. And let's, um, like Brother Matt said, have standing room only in the house of God on Easter. We have three services next week. No Sunday school. Um, We will also have the photo booths that will be in the annex building. There will be two photo booths set up. And you can choose which one you would like to get your picture made in front of. And there will be people out there directing you in and out so that it goes smoothly. And someone will be there to take your picture on your phone if you would like for them to. Uh, That will be available. Yes, sir. Will do. So the photo booth will be available all three services next week. Also, the offering boxes are in the back. Um, don't forget about those when you leave and to designate if you want it for the building fund, please. Daughters of the King tonight at 5 o'clock. We will have an awesome testimony, a time of fellowship, and uh, then a time of food. So hope to see you ladies there. Come and bring a friend. Men's prayer breakfast is Tuesday morning at Down Home. Brother Ken Cooper leads that. Uh, men, please um, join him for breakfast and a time with God. CR is tomorrow night at 6. We would love to see you here. Cup of Encouragement is Thursday morning at 8 in the Old Church. We um, gather for a time of just Christian fellowship and uh, praying for one another. It's an awesome time. Sing for the Risen King is coming up Saturday night at 6 o'clock. That is just, that's always been one of my favorite times. Great time to worship God and just um, the presence of God is always here. It's so evident. It's awesome. So that's 6 o'clock next Saturday night and then Easter Sunday next Sunday. Uh, There's no Sunday school, but there is children's church for each service. Yes. I didn't say the men's prayer breakfast on Tuesday morning. Men's prayer breakfast Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right, we're going to introduce the children to come in, and then we'll close with a word of prayer.
All right, let's stand and close with a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord, we just come to you. Dear God, just seeing these beautiful young children, dear God, in front of the church, dear God, we know that you love the little children. And dear God, we thank you for the homes that they represent this morning, dear God. We thank you for their their eagerness and their excitement to get up here, dear God, and wave those palm branches and, and just shout Hosanna. Dear God, I just pray as adults we have the heart that they have and we go out into the world and we shout Hosanna to everyone we meet. Dear God, we love you with all our heart. Dear God, we thank you for the times that you visit us. Dear God, we thank you for the times that you're there with us, that you carry us when we can't carry ourselves. Dear God, we thank you for the awesome message this morning in a time of worship. Dear God, we're blessed to be a part of this church and to be in this house. And dear God, the, your presence is always here. And dear God, well, I just pray that we take it out into our community and let others know the joy and the love that we experience when we get to spend time with you. Dear God, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for the baptisms this morning for those whose names are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they will spend eternity in heaven with you, with us. Dear God, we thank you for that. Be with us as we go throughout the day. Help us to be a shining light for you that others can see you through us. We love you and we praise your name. Amen. Y'all have a great week.